Hello, welcome to Thor Talk, the show all about Marvel's resident God of Thunder. On this episode of Thor Talk, we're going to be going through Thor's complete history in video games, from the beginning to the upcoming Square Enix Avengers game. Also, we will not be addressing mobile games and just focus on consoles and PC. So let's begin on Thor Talk. I am Thor the Thunderer, son of Odin, prince of Asgard. And this world is under my protection! <laughs> Thor's first appearance in a video game was in 1995's Avengers in Galactic Storm, a fighting game set during the Operation Galactic Storm storyline. However, while Thor is in the game, he is not fully playable, and instead is only available as an assist character. Thor would be snubbed yet again in his next video game appearance, Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes, where he is once again only available as an assist character. Next, Thor was slated to have a cameo conversing with Spider-Man in a scene at the end of 2001 Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro for the PlayStation, but the scene was cut due to the 9-11 terrorist attacks as the two towers were featured in Thor's scene. However, a small part of Thor's cameo did survive in the final game in the form of a newspaper headline in which the Daily Bugle gives Thor credit for stopping Electro, much to Spider-Man's chagrin. Finally, in 2006, a full 11 years after his first video game appearance, Thor would be fully playable in Marvel Ultimate Alliance, a dungeon crawler in which players could make teams of four from a roster of over 20 characters. Thor made up for lost time by being one of the four main characters in the game's story, which involved trying to stop Doctor Doom and his Masters of Evil. The game was so well received that it would get a sequel in the form of Thor's next video game appearance, 2009's Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. The game kept most of the mechanics from the original, but it added new elements such as team-up attacks called fusions. The game's new story was primarily focused on the Civil War storyline, but Thor is a non-factor in the story. Thor is fully playable and can be unlocked by finding all five Asgardian runes throughout the game or by entering a cheat code. A few months later, Thor would appear in the 2009 beat-em-up Marvel Superhero Squad. Based on the TV show of the same name, the game featured the Superhero Squad trying to collect all six Infinity Fractals before Doctor Doom, and additionally featured a battle mode. Thor would go to Asgard to collect the Infinity Fractal in his level, and would be opposed by Loki. It is also worth mentioning that the Nintendo DS version of the game is drastically different, and in this version, Thor does not get his own level, and instead is the boss in Magneto's level. While the game did receive mixed reviews, it did get a sequel in 2010's Marvel Superhero Squad The Infinity Gauntlet. The game had three modes, Challenge Mode, Free Play Mode, and Story Mode. This time, the superhero squad attempts to collect all the Infinity Stones, and Thor once again would receive his own level. In that same year, a Thor costume would be released in Little Big Planet 2, along with several other Marvel costumes. Thor's next video game appearance is an odd one, with Marvel Super Heroes 3D Grandmasters Challenge, which was released in late 2010. The developers described it as a cross between a board game and an action game, with up to four players. Thor was one of five characters available in the game, and the game was bundled with a Thor 3D mask along with the other four heroes. The few reviews existing on the game were less than favorable. First releasing in December of 2010, Marvel Pinball was a collection of Marvel-themed virtual pinball machines. Thor was featured in many of these machines, and even got his own pinball machine as a part of the Vengeance and Virtues tables. In February of 2011, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Fate of Two Worlds was released, and Thor was fully playable in the series for the first time ever. He dealt plenty of damage, and had a move called Mighty Speech, in which he would deliver a grandiose Asgardian speech and gain meter as he did so. Next, Thor would take to the MMORPG world in late 2011 with Marvel Super Hero Squad Online. The game allowed players to explore hubs, play mini-games, go on missions, and play as several heroes. Several versions of Thor were available in the game, and Asgard was one of the hub worlds that players could explore. Unfortunately, the game shut down in January of 2017. Finally, in April of 2011, Thor would get his own game with Thor, God of Thunder. 
The game featured Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, and Jamie Alexander reprising their roles from the film. The game's story focuses on Thor accidentally releasing the monstrous Mangog, and while the game has the same title on all consoles, there are actually three completely different versions of the game. The first version of the game was released on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, and it seems to be inspired by the God of War series, with hack and slash combat, puzzles, platforming, and huge bosses. The game was very poorly received, but it blessed the world with this. And what two have wrought, two can put to right. Two? The second version released on the Wii, and later the 3DS, was more of a straightforward beat-em-up that received mixed reviews. The third version for the Nintendo DS was received as the best of the bunch, and even boasts the best reviews of any MCU tie-in game. This game was a side-scrolling 2D brawler that had Thor battling against massive bosses. Additionally, there were plans for a PlayStation Portable version of the game, but it was scrapped. Thor would next appear in the final Marvel Super Hero Squad game, Marvel Super Hero Squad Comic Combat. This game was paired with the UDraw game tablet, which allowed for unique gameplay, but the game, much like the UDraw tablet itself, has been all but forgotten. Soon, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was released, and this game was essentially just Marvel vs. Capcom 3 with a few new elements and characters. Thor was given a few minor updates, including needing less time to charge a few of his attacks. Additionally, there was a planned Avengers video game that was set to release around the same time as the Avengers movie in 2012, but unfortunately the studio was shut down in August of 2011, so the game was cancelled. This first-person game was originally set to feature the Avengers going up against the Skrulls, and Thor would have been one of the playable characters. Next was a very unusual fighting game, with 2012's Marvel Avengers Battle for Earth. The game was first released for Kinect on the Xbox 360, and then for the Wii U shortly afterwards, with the game mostly having motion controls that had the players acting out what they wanted their characters to do. The game's story was based on the Secret Invasion storyline, and Thor was a fully playable character. Next, Thor would return to the world of MMORPGs with 2013's Marvel Heroes. While the game was developed by the same developers as Superhero Squad Online, the game was aimed at a slightly older audience and was more mission-oriented. Thor is fully playable, but what makes this version stand out from his other appearances is that he can actually use his most powerful attack in the comics, the God Blast. A console port under the name Marvel Heroes Omega was released in late June of 2017, but unfortunately all versions of the game were shut down a few months later. In 2013, the Marvel Arcade pack was released for the PlayStation Vita version of Little Big Planet. This pack features three mini-games including Shield Interceptor, Avengers Ultimate Escape, and Hero Rush. Thor was featured in all three mini-games. Next, Thor became part of the LEGO game series with LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. The game's story pitted the Marvel superheroes against the likes of Doctor Doom, Loki, and Galactus. Thor would appear in the seventh chapter of the game's story which took place on Asgard, and there was a large open world of New York City that could be freely explored by Thor and almost every other character in the game. When Skylander showed that there was a market for Toys to Life games, Disney capitalized with Disney Infinity, which featured a variety of Disney characters. The game was a success and Disney followed it up with Disney Infinity, Marvel Super Heroes. Along with several other characters, Thor was released as a figure that could be used in the game as a character. Thor was one of the few characters that could fly, and was playable in the Avengers playset, as well as the toy box. Not long afterward, Marvel Disc Wars The Avengers Ultimate Heroes was released on the 3DS exclusively in Japan. Based on the Marvel Disc Wars anime, it featured a story mode and a challenge mode, with Thor being one of the playable characters. The next year, Disney Infinity would bring Star Wars to their series with Disney Infinity 3.0. However, Thor was still playable in this game if you used the figure from the previous game. He could only be used in the toy box mode, but there's enough there to have some fun. Thor Ragnarok figures were planned to be in Disney Infinity 4.0, but unfortunately the series was cancelled before 4.0 arrived. 2016 would kick off with Thor returning to the LEGO games with LEGO Marvel's Avengers. The story was based off of the events of the MCU movies, even using the audio from the movies for the voices of most of the characters, 
technically making this the second time Chris Hemsworth has voiced Thor in a video game. This is beyond you, Metal Man. He gives up the cube, he's all yours. Until then, stay out of the way, tourist. The open world of New York returned with a few tweaks, and several new open worlds were added, including a very impressive Asgard open world that could be freely explored. In 2017, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite arrived as the next installment in the series, and Thor returned once again as a fully playable character. The game added a story mode in which Thor falls into the control of Ultron Sigma, before being freed by the Soul Stone. Thor, destroy them! Thor! I am not your puppet, Ultron Omega. You took my will and my strength, but you shall not have my soul! Near the end of 2017, Thor returned to the LEGO games yet again with LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. This time, Kang the Conqueror has taken places from time and space and combined them to create Chronopolis, a world that includes Kun Lun, Sakaar, and even Asgard during Ragnarok. After 10 years, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance series is returning with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order, which is set to release July 19, 2019 exclusively on the Nintendo Switch. The story revolves around reaching the Infinity Stones before Thanos and his forces, and Thor is going to be fully playable in the game once again. In May 2020, Square Enix will be releasing Marvel's Avengers, a story-driven Avengers game starring Iron Man, Captain America, Black Widow, Hulk, and the Mighty Thor. Set five years after the tragic events of A-Day, the Avengers will have to fight to regain what they lost, and reassemble. The game offers customization and the ability to play alongside up to four players. So that's all of Thor's video game appearances from the very beginning until now. And while at first it may have taken the Thunder God a while to get a foothold in video games, it doesn't look like he's going away anytime soon. Well, that's all for this episode of Thor Talk. If you want to keep up with and support Thor Talk, simply subscribe. Once again, I'd like to formally state that all art and video is owned by its suspecting companies, and I own none of it. With that said, see you next time on Thor Talk, where... You'll be home.